performance display manager at Holiday Extras. That's why she didn't do it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so yeah, I'm Liam. You just heard my job title. Um, I'm going to talk to you about audiences, and I believe they're the future of marketing. Hopefully you do too. Google definitely do. Uh, I've been to many Google events in this year, and they're all based around audience and the new products that come out around audience. Um, so just to get started, this is my mantra. Um, so customers, not pixels. Segments, not channels. Um, and that's basically around the fact you shouldn't be looking at how many pixels you can acquire. You should be looking at how many customers you can acquire. Uh, and segments, not channels, is really an omni-channel approach to audiences. So you shouldn't be looking at audiences in a specific channel. You shouldn't just be looking at Facebook or just Google in silos. You should be looking at segments of audiences you can create and then share to all of those channels at once. Uh, and this is another one of my bugbears. So uh, personalization is not segmentation. Um, so personalization is a one-to-one -one communication with the customer. So if I go to a landing page and it says, hello, Liam, that's personalization. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, segmentation is a group of customers with the same behaviors or attributes. Um, so that is a proper segment, an audience segment. Um, so don't think about personalization when you think about segmentation audiences. Think about segments of customers. Uh, and a good example of that is having a customer segment of all your previous customers. Uh, and then using that to segment to target, bid, change your message, or offer certain products to those customers. Uh, so this is step one, so get started. Um, to get started, um, you go for the lowest hanging fruit with audiences, and that's remarketing. Um, and there's three steps I'm going to take you through. The first one is use a tag management system. Um, so I work in a company with around 200 developers. I do the tagging, because then I know exactly what's going into each platform. Um, to do that, I use Google Tag Manager. It's free, it's amazing, please use it. If you're not using Google Tag Manager, go home tonight, get Google Tag Manager on your site. Uh, have a single point of truth. Um, so push information from your site to the data layer. Um, so the data layer is just, you can do a data layer push from anywhere on your site, ask the developer if you don't know what data layer is. Uh, and you can push information from the page to the data layer and pick it up in Tag Manager. So I'll explain a bit more about that in a sec. Uh, and then use remarketing tag parameters to create audiences. So most people, when they create an audience in Google or Facebook, they go in, they click page view, and then type in a bit of the URL or the page path, and that's how they build an audience. Um, but I believe the future is parameter-based remarketing. Um, so first, I'm going to sell a Google product to you, even though I don't work at Google. I wish I worked at Google, but I don't work at Google. Um, so the first step is to push data from your website using a formatted data layer event. Um, so with a data layer, it's a formatted bit of code. Basically, you can um, have a key value uh, parameters and values. And you can push it all in a single event. So if you want a page load event, push it as a page load event, and then all the things that relate to that page in the page load. If you want a click event, push a click event with all the different parameters based around that click. Um, and then in Tag Manager, it's really easy to pick up data layer events um, because it's three clicks. You create a variable, which is a data layer variable. And then the layers are dots. So if you've got an event, that is page load, and then dot uh, page type, and then dot whatever the, whatever the next one is. So it's layers, which are dots. Uh, and then you pass the same variable to your third party tags to create parameter-based audiences. Um, so in Tag Manager, it's really easy to do this for Facebook and Google as well. Um, Google in Tag Manager obviously is integrated because it's a Google product. So if you're doing a um, AdWords marketing list, it's literally click on the uh, additional parameters, and then you can type in as many as you want. Analytics does the same thing, so you can use custom dimensions. Again, it's one click away, and then you can fill in all the parameters you want. And Facebook is a bit different. You have to apply them to an event, which I'll explain a bit later again. Um, but essentially, what you're doing here is pushing one source of truth from your website, collecting it with Tag Manager, and pushing it out to all the places you want to use that audience. Uh, why use the data layer? It's a single source of truth. Uh, things change as well, so I put in the URL here. The page paths are unique, and the parameter can change at any time. Um, so if you're relying on a parameter that may go missing if your developer decides they don't need it anymore, or a page path that will change because you're doing a new campaign and you have to create another list, that becomes a bit of a ball ache, and you'll have real inconsistencies between channels. If someone's managing your Facebook and someone's managing your AdWords, and they could try and create the same audience using the same page, they'll slightly change the rule, or they'll slightly use a different page, or they'll use a different parameter, and it might not be there forever. Um, the advantage of using um, a parameter also means you can group pages. So if you want anyone that's visited a landing page, that page parameter can be page type landing page. Every single landing page, one audience, you don't have to type out. If you, we have hundreds of thousands of pages at Holiday Extras, so you don't have to type out every single page path. 
Uh, and you can also map data so it's easy to adjust to create audiences. Uh, a good example of that is time. Um, so if you have a time drop down or a time input and it's done by hour, when you want to create an audience for people that are leaving early or people arriving early, you have to type in each of those different values that they could put in. Um, but if you map it, you can just have an early parameter uh, and then once map it in Google Tag Manager. So pass in time, output early if it's an early time or normal or late. Uh, this is how to do it. Um, so this is what you'll normally see um, on Facebook when you're creating an audience. You go to audiences, you'll, create a pic you'll pick your pixel, and you'll get a page view. All you have to do is click Refine By, and then the parameters will come in there. Um, so Facebook has uh, four different events, page view, view content, uh, add to basket, and purchase. Within those, you can add as many parameters as you want, and then use that. So I've done the example of landing page. Um, so the page view event page type is landing page. So every time someone views any landing page, doesn't matter what the URL is, doesn't matter what domain it's on, doesn't matter what the page path is, doesn't matter what parameters are in that string, it will always be the landing page. Uh, Google is pretty much the same, except there's one less step because it's a single tag that fires across your site, and any event has the same parameters in. Um, so here, all your custom parameters will come up in the list um, where you'd normally see like URL or page path, and you can just type in whichever one you want it to equal. Uh, and then the best way to use this um, for marketing is upgrade it to dynamic marketing. Um, so this is really easy to do on both Google and Facebook. Um, Google will have a list online of all the different feed types. And essentially what you do is you pass a single parameter of your product type, for example, to Google, and they'll match it against the product in the feed, and that, feed, that product will show in the ad. Um, this is really powerful, and if you want to make um, direct response bookings on display, this is the way to do it. Um, so most people will tell you that display will not make direct response bookings from a click to a booking with the same session, but I'll tell you, you can, I make hundreds of them a day through display, uh, and it's all done through dynamic marketing. Uh, the second step after remarketing is to uncover audiences within your data, so using your data to create audiences. Um, so when it becomes your data, and you know previous customers, for example, you know the value of those people, you know the frequency they come to your site and book, and you know the recency that they last came to your site or booked. And all of those are really valuable things that you can't just get from a pixel or a cookie when they visit your site once. Um, and then, so once you know that data, you hypothesize based on that data. Um, so you look for patterns or behaviors within your customer data, and then you create segments based off that, and you go out and test the high value or the high intent segments. And that'll get you far. Uh, the way to do this on each marketing platform, um, so they call it slightly different, but it's the same thing. Facebook call it a custom audience, um, so you can upload customer files. And I'll show you all the different parameters you can use to get those in a sec. And Google call it customer match upload. And it's currently only available on search, um, but there's a little star there, so you might want to take whatever you can. I'm under non-disclosure agreement, but... Uh, but the only problem with this is that you'll only get a match rate based on what Google or Facebook know about that person. So if you're uploading email addresses, for example, Facebook will normally only match 60% of them, and that's because obviously I use a different login on Facebook than I use for my email address to book stuff. Uh, Google will get about 70% because you're normally logged into some kind of Google product or service, so they know who you are. Um, so these are the different things you can use to upload to Google to tell them about your customers. Um, the more interesting ones, so everyone knows about email address. Not many people know about physical address. Um, so you can plow in everyone's physical address of your customers into Google and they'll match them. Uh, phone number, mobile device ID, if you've got an app, it's really useful um, because they are logged in. And then user ID is probably the best one um, because that's your GA user ID that Google creates for you when they visit your site and it will store that in a cookie. Um, so any time that customer visits your site, they'll know who they are, and that's the same across every site. Facebook's list is a bit longer because they know more about you personally. Um, but I wouldn't advise doing things like year of birth or gender or age because if you just upload a list of people you know are male, that's not going to do much, and they could have told you that anyway. Have I got to hurry up? Is the pizza going to get cold? Like? <laughs> Uh, and then the third stage is how to grow using third-party audience. This is probably the, the most complex way you can use an audience. Uh, and there's lots of places you can get audiences for free. Google and Facebook give you tons of audiences with tons of detail, for, totally free. 
if you spend money in ads. Um, so with this one, what you want to do is target your potential customers rather than your current audience. And there's no point in targeting your current audience. You've already got those tagged. Uh, you want to qualify that audience with an interaction and generate a new audience. So for example, with us, um, Google does an in-market for travel. I work for a travel company. Um, so when I know they're in-market for travel, I want to qualify the fact they are. So Google will do that based on if they're looking around travel sites, if they're nearly booking a travel product or a holiday. We sell the bits when you get to the airport. So it's not exactly in-market for travel. So I want to qualify the audience by them interacting with an ad of mine by viewing it through on YouTube or clicking it. Uh, and then you want to sequentially market to the audience to capture a sale. So if you go home or back to work tomorrow, say I want to sequentially market with parameter-based audiences and someone should hopefully know what you're saying. Um, so to target your potential customers, don't be afraid to go up a funnel. Um, just make sure you get the message and the call to action right. A good example of this for us is I ask people if they're going on holiday and I have a big button saying, yes, I am. People absolutely love telling you they're going on holiday on Facebook, especially like I put ads out on Facebook. They're like, are you going on holiday? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, I am. Everyone look. Uh, and for also generate custom audiences or lookalike audiences, which is what Facebook calls them. Um, so with Google, you can do this based on anything like a domain or an app that they've been on. Um, so the best one to do is obviously your competitors. Just plug in a list of your competitors' domains, and that will create an audience of people that are likely or similar to those people. Uh, are likely to put your products. Uh, and then lookalikes, um, if you have a really high value audience on Facebook, for example, converters, just create a lookalike, and that will go out and find similar people like that. Uh, qualify the audience with interaction. Um, so this is really important, I feel, um, to generate a new audience that you can sell to. Um, so never look to make a booking from a third party upper funnel audience because it's never going to happen. Um, but qualify an audience, create a new one, and that's the one where you get the booking from. Um, so they've interacted with your brand and now, now in, product, in, in market for your product or service. And the other great thing about these people is if they click on an ad um, and show an interaction and intent, um, you can use that opportunity to generate a lead. Um, so have a really simple page with an email capture on it, and that is it and then you can sequentially market to that person via email, and you've tagged them on Facebook, and you've tagged them on Google, so you can send them display or Facebook ads. Uh, this is an example of sequential marketing. So YouTube, um, ad, a view or a click, creates an audience, and then you use that on your other channels to generate a booking. Um, and I mentioned YouTube specifically, because there's a trick to YouTube to generate an audience. Um, so I call it playing true view. Uh, and essentially what Google do is they expect you to put an ad in between 10 and 30 seconds, which is fine. Uh, the first five seconds is all about preventing that person from skipping. So try and make it as big, as bold, as shouty as possible in that first five seconds. They can't skip it, but you want to keep their attention. Um, a view is actually counted from 10 seconds. They don't tell you that. Um, so as soon as you get to 10 seconds without skipping, a view is counted. Um, so the optimal ad to create an audience is actually 12 seconds. Um, so an average view through rate on, on YouTube is 12% watching the whole ad. Um, a view through rate at tw a 12 second video is 35%. So you've over doubled your audience capture by just having a 12 second video rather than having a 20 second video or a 30 second video. And if you do want to have a really long video, you only pay after 30 seconds, but I don't see the point in that because you can have a really low view through rate. You're not actually generating an audience. You're just showing people an ad. Uh, now I'm going to go on to some quick tips, quick fire tips. Um, so the most underused um, audience, I think, anywhere is the live event of upcoming birthday on Facebook. Um, because who doesn't want something for their birthday? and like anything can be applied to a birthday. I can offer you a discount for your birthday, a present for your birthday. If I own a restaurant, you can come to a restaurant for your birthday. Uh, a really good example of when I recently used this as well is combining that event with age targeting for a specific birthday. So one of our sister companies is called MyDrive and they offer um, a match between you and a driving instructor. Um, you start learning to drive when you're 17. On your 17th birthday, you start thinking about trying to find a driving instructor. Therefore, upcoming birthday, which means your birthday is within the next week because you told Facebook your birthday. Um, and then the fact that you're 16 to 17 means you're having your 17th birthday and we'll try and tell you some driving lessons. 
Um, dynamic remarketing for everything. Um, this is mainly based around Google. Um, so most people, when they look at dynamic remarketing, they think a product-based ad. Um, so they looked at this product, I'll show them that product, and that's what dynamic marketing is, but it's not. It's a really useful tool for having um, a wide range of personalization in your ads. A really good example is we capture a trip, and then we can say, you're going to Barcelona, and we have every single destination in the list, or we know what airport you're flying from, so it's you're flying from Gatwick or Heathrow, or, and without having to create 30 different ad sets. Um, so entirely ignore what Google tell you about dynamic marketing, don't just think of it as a product. Also, totally bastardized their feed system, which is what I do. I have four different types of feed on my page, but all of them are related to travel, but I don't just use the travel feed or the hotel's feed. I use lots of custom feeds. Um, so just ignore the template. Um, make sure you fill the holes with the right things, um, but m just basically bastardize it to have whatever dynamic marketing you want with whatever parameter you want to show them whatever thing you want, not just a product. Uh, open up with a Facebook chatbot. This is one of my favorite things at the moment. I've been working on this a lot with Holiday Extras. Uh, and mainly because of the open rate and the success we've had with it. Um, so the average email open rate is 22, uh, 23% basically. Um, but the average messenger open rate is 98%. Because when you get that little red dot on your Facebook, you click on it and then you go to your messages and you definitely want to read it. Whereas if you get an email, you just swipe it left and it goes away forever. Uh, and then the emails get an average click-through rate of 3.26, whereas Messenger gets an average click-through rate of 28.4%, and that's people going to your site, ready to book something. And then what we do is we capture their email address in the ManyChat, and then we send, it to, we send them an email, and 79% of people open that email because they've actively asked for you to send them an email rather than just being on your marketing list. And like, oh, I forgot the video, damn it. It was a little video. <laughs> Uh, but that'll show you the chatbot. Um, so ask where you're going, and then you tell it where you're going, you tell it when you're going, you give it your email address, and it sends you an email saying, hi, Liam, you're going to Munich on the mm, of December. Here's your discount. And it's really cool. And then I'm going to play the next one, so I remember. You can watch it while I talk. Um, the next one as well, um, you can capture and store custom fields. Um, so every time you enter anything on here, I capture and store it against you as a person. Facebook tells me who you are, gives me your profile picture. Um, so I can go into ManyChat, which is the bot provider we use, and see who you are, what age, your actual name, your birthday, everything. Um, and I have loads of fields, like every time you enter something, basically, if you enter a date or a time or a place, I'm capturing it and knowing where you're going, when you're going, what you're doing. You can also make external API requests. So you can see there, ask for a flight number. You input the flight number, and then I know where you're going, when you're going. And that's because we've got a flight API. So we query the flight API with the flight number, and it comes back and tells me you're going to JFK. Uh, and what time you're going. And then I capture your email address. At that point, I've already sent you an email saying you're going to New York. Hi, Liam. Do you want some discounts? Uh, and then, what does I do next? Based on that, um, I ask um, how you're getting to the airport. If you click driving, I'll offer you airport parking. If you click you're getting a taxi, a train, or anything else, I'll offer you an airport lounge, which is what I've done. Then I'll ask how many people are going, if you've got kids, and then I'll offer you products. And that is based on our own API, Happy, which will return Holiday Extras products to you. Um, so there's actual products with actual prices for the things you told me, where you're going, when you're going, what airport you're flying from, and who you're traveling with. And then within Messenger, you can book. So you never leave Messenger, and you can tell me everything about your trip, and then I can give you personalized products, and you can book within Facebook Messenger. Uh, if you want to link um, to any third parties, I recommend Zapier. Uh, it's free to get started. So is ManyChat if you want to try and make a chatbot. If you want to pay me to make you a chatbot, that's cool. <laughs> uh, Zapier will get any information from um, ManyChat into MailChimp or whatever third party provider via a webhook. Uh, and these should be your new best friends. So if you're doing any kind of audience work, um, basically you should have Google Tag Assistant and Facebook Pixel Helper in Chrome as an extension. Otherwise, you just don't know what you're doing. Um, so this one is Google Tag Assistant. It will show you every single Google Tag on your site. You can click into those. You can see the requests it's making to Google. It's all nice and, and looks nice and easily worded, so it's not nothing, nothing technical whatsoever. Um, you can see all the parameters you're passing through when you've set up the parameter-based marketing that I mentioned before. And this is the Facebook one called Facebook Pixel Helper. Um, this will see you the set events that they have, like page view and search. But then if you click on the little arrow, it will show you the parameters you're passing through to Facebook as well. And they should be the same because you're passing through Google Tag Manager as variables. Um, so to recap, get started with marketing. 
upgrade to dynamic remarketing, bastardize their fees and use every kind of dynamic remarketing you can, uncover audiences within your data, and then grow third-party audiences. Any questions?